This video will discuss the Hartree-Fock Roton equations for solving Hartree-Fock using a basis set. So up until this point, we've gotten ourselves to a nice uh, simple expression for the restricted Hartree-Fock equations, uh, where we have basically our uh, Fock operator as a function of just the spatial variables of electron 1 acting on some spatial orbital, psi i, gives us the orbital energy of that orbital, epsilon i, times the same spatial orbital, psi i back. And whenever we have all of our spatial orbitals being eigenfunctions of the Fock operator, then we have all of their exact orbital energies, and we can calculate um, the total determinant energy, and life is great. So there's only one problem with this, and it's the fact that we still can't solve exactly all of these Hart canonical Hartree-Fock equations. And it's because it's an integral differential equation, and it's multi-dimensional, multi it's non-separable, it still has all these kinds of problems. So what we're going to do uh, is use a basis set uh, to reduce some of the complexity that remains here. Now using this basis set, we're going to get to a set of equations which are a bunch of matrices that'll actually end up in a uh, general algorithmic procedure that we could use and implement on a computer. Uh, and this, is, this third approximation here is what we're actually going to use to get to a final set of, uh, of, of programmable equations. So the first approximation that I mentioned early on in this chapter was the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, that our nuclei are fixed uh, and that they are treated as sort of classical point particles because they move very slowly relative to the electrons. The second approximation was the mean field approximation, uh, basically that the electron doesn't interact explicitly with all the, other in, all the other electrons integrated over all possible positions, but the electron interacts with the mean field or the charge density of all the other electrons. And our third approximation, which finally allows us to get some traction and move forward, is that we're using a finite set of atomic orbitals as a basis set in which to expand our, uh, our, our spin orbitals or our spatial orbitals here. Okay, so if we want to look at a particular spatial orbital, psi i, the way we're going to represent that is as a sum from mu equals 1 to k of c mu i phi mu. So phi mu is going to be what we call some basis function and there are going to be k basis functions altogether, which altogether form a basis set. So if the basis set is sufficiently good and sufficiently complete, then we can represent pretty much any spatial orbital we desire, any sort of function of three-dimensional space, as a linear combination of this basis set. So often, um, you know, we can't solve these problems exactly, so we don't know 100% what atomic orbitals and molecular orbitals should look like. But we know from the hydrogen atom what those solutions look like, and we know from experiments that, uh, you know, the, the orbitals and the electron densities for other atoms does, don't look, you know, super different, that things that look sort of like the atomic orbitals of hydrogen, but maybe more spread out, maybe maybe altered a little bit, that those are a pretty good uh, starting point for, for where to move forward. So discussions of basis sets in detail will be left to later chapters in this course. So if you're curious, you can jump ahead to there. But for now, we're just going to assume that there is some basis set of atomic orbitals, uh, which some basis set of functions which we're using to represent our uh, our spatial orbitals uh, in whatever molecule we're computing. Okay, so this is what our spatial orbital is going to look like in our Hartree-Fock equations. So if we substitute in this expression into the kind of uh, pseudo eigenvalue equation here, we have the Fock operator acting on this linear combination of, of basis functions equals the orbital energy times the linear combination of basis functions. And then we might also rearrange this. We might left multiply by uh, phi star mu and integrate with respect to the coordinates of electron 1. So if we do that left multiplication and integration on both sides, then what we end up with is this following sum, sum over nu, c nu i, integral 
over dr1, which is dx1, dy1, Z, dz1, from negative infinity to infinity each. Phi mu star f phi nu um, equaling epsilon i sum over nu c nu i integral phi nu star phi mu. Or sorry, phi mu star phi nu. So what we have on the left-hand side here is an integral, which is an expectation value sort of looking thing of the Fock operator. And on the right-hand side, we have what looks like an overlap integral between two basis functions. So to deal with this, we're going to define two new matrices. We're going to define what we call the Fock matrix, F mu nu, which is defined as the integral of phi mu star F phi nu. And we're going to define the overlap matrix of these basis functions, which is defined as the integral of phi mu star phi nu. All right, so substituting in these definitions for these matrix elements into this uh, Hartree-Fock equations, these Hartree-Fock equations here, we get sum over nu f mu nu c nu i equals epsilon i sum over nu s mu nu c nu i. And this is true for all values of nu, which are equal to, uh, the sum is for nu equals 1 up to k. And this is true for all values of mu, also equal from 1 to k. So putting these two things together, um, what you basically have here is this type of expression where you have the matrix F times the matrix C equals matrix S times matrix C times matrix E, or matrix epsilon. So the F being the Fock matrix, um, S being the overlap matrix, uh, e, being a, e being a diagonal matrix, which only contains the orbital energies. So epsilon, uh, the elements of it are just the orbital energies on the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. So we, and then this last matrix is what we call the C matrix or the coefficient matrix. So basically the, a, a single column of the C matrix represents all the coefficients which indicate how you form a particular uh, molecular orbital out of all of these uh, atomic basis functions. So C11 up to CK1 are all the coefficients of Psi1. C12 up to CK2 are all the coefficients of Psi2 all the way up to Psi K. And each row here is the coefficient of what each of those spatial orbitals is for basis function Phi1. All right, so the Hartree-Fock Rotan equations basically say this, there's a bunch of integrals here. Calculate those integrals, and then once you have those integrals, uh, solve this type of matrix equation, and you can get the coefficients. And those coefficients indicate what all of your uh, what all of your Hartree-Fock orbitals are, and this epsilon matrix represents what all of your orbital energies are. So all we have to do is solve this set of equations, and and life is great. We do a bunch of integrals, get the matrix elements, and then go to town. Uh, but the only problem is that, in fact, this Fock operator is a function of the C matrix. Because we note that the Fock operator itself, in the two electron terms, depends on what all the other orbitals are. And if we're looking from the perspective of orbital 1, it cares what orbitals 2 through k are because it has to interact with those through the Coulomb and exchange operators. So to know what the Fock operator is for, for orbital 1, we have to know orbitals 2 through k. For, to know what it is for orbital 2, we have to know 1 and 3 through k, etc. You have to know what all the other orbitals are in order to build the Fock matrix. And you have to build the Fock matrix to know what all the orbitals are. So in effect, we have a chicken and egg problem here in terms of which one comes first. We need to solve Fc equals Sce, and we don't have F, we don't have C, and we don't have E. All we have at the beginning is S. So this is a problem, and this is a nonlinear uh, set of, of equations here. So the next few videos will be how do we go about uh, getting solutions uh, to this set of equations, uh, which give us some sort of foothold to actually solve them for what the actual orbitals and orbital energies in Hartree-Fock are.